to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Prophesy one time to yourself that everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen speak to the atmosphere everything that was lost shall be returned It's a prophecy, it's not a song. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. One more time from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice in one minute and say, speak to me, O God. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Are you praying? Ambreto ko soto barata balada balaka ta prada kaska prati ala bakasia Shekete pros kate bal de brasela bariada balada dada I tell you the presence of God is mighty in this place Holy 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 holy
now sing thou fountains of the deep cry out God cry out God break forth thou spirit of the deep cry out God Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Sing hallelujah. outside can you shout a resounding hallelujah let every devil know you are alive and doing well and you insist that that which belongs to you must come to you shout one more time hallelujah I want to share with us a spiritual secret tonight and then we will pray I want to share with us very briefly the secret of spiritual power Please, I want you to pay attention. There is no man who wants to make a mark in the sands of time. There is no man living in the 21st century who wants to make any notable mark in the spirit. Who will ignore the place of power. There are so many believers who are zealous. So many believers want to become all that God has destined them to be. They have desire. They are sincere. They may even have faith. But they lack spiritual power. Hallelujah. What you will be learning very briefly and then we'll pray. is supposed to empower you. Listen. A point must come in the life of a man when you will have an encounter with power. This realm that we live in is a realm that is compelled by power. It's not compelled by desire. It's not just compelled by sincerity. It's compelled by power. Psalm 63. The psalmist began to cry and communicate something. Psalm 63. Are we there? O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul tasted for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and weary land where no water is. And this is why I seek for you. Verse 2. It says to see thy power and thy glory reproduced in my life. The same way I saw it in the sanctuary. It's not enough to see power in the church and on crusade grounds. Lord, I want that spiritual reality to be at work in my life. Years ago, when I sensed the call of God upon my life, please listen. 
I began to study books and study men and women. I studied large churches and ministries. And I found out as I studied that there were so many people who were powerless and could not do much. And when God began to describe to me the kind of ministry and the dimensions that he would want me to walk in, I knew that I would have to spend time with God until I taught something genuine. Otherwise, I would have to join the band of people misleading and deceiving themselves and other people. Speaking with no results. And then, I began a journey exploring spiritual power. I began to study the lives of men and women who had been used mightily. Unfortunately, I did not find many of them that were models enough. I began to study the generals. I began to study the apostles, Elijah. Hallelujah. And in the course of my journey, for me, it was a matter of life and death. It was not just for my name. I knew that I would confront sick people. I knew that I would confront oppressed people. I knew that it would take power for any kind of increase in ministry. Spiritually, numerically, and otherwise. I knew posters would only do so much. I knew English would only do so much. And I made up my mind that I have no message for God's people until I have the power to prove it. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing. This is an exhortation. I want to stir up your heart. I watch in sincere grief as I see a lot of men of God and people who want to be used by God with so much zeal, so much English, but no power. And then a few who have taught what they believe to be power convince themselves that because they touched someone and he fell down. Why do you need spiritual power? I'll tell you. Pastor Alpha and Manasseh shared it very powerfully. There are giants on every mountain. Please pay attention. This city has gates. That you are here is a sign of dominion. It's not a sign of the absence of darkness. It's a sign of the prevailing power of God over them. There are many lives here that have been buffeted by darkness. I talk to people all the time and I minister, I minister all the time. And I watch with shock the way Satan prevails cheaply over the lives of people. There are doors that will never open until power opens them. When Moses went to Pharaoh, there was very little conversation. When the conversations were done, it was an encounter of power. Are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? And then I began to pray. I remember when I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. He never spoke a word to me. But he transferred power. Never spoke one word. But something left him and entered my spirit. He said, the entrance of your word giveth light. And understanding unto the simple. I remember when I began to see the miracles and the hand of God. Then I began to see other issues that I could not contend with in the lives of people. And I knew that I had to go back. And that was when I learned that you must consistently contend for spiritual power. Let me tell you something. There is too much noise in the church because there is little power. You will always have to explain and explain and explain. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. He says, but I came to you in the demonstration of the spirit. power, That your faith will not be upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Tonight, I want to guide us through a few secrets my personal spiritual journey I promise you that if you pay attention to this little exhortation you will encounter power 
Jacob was a man who met with the Lord and he held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. It was an encounter with power. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. I said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. And he says, from now henceforth, your name is changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have fought with God. You have contended with God and prevailed. A time must come in a man's life when you'll be tired of the level you are and cry in desperation. Lord, I need your power and your glory in my life. There are gates. Many of us come from all kinds of regions. Hear me. Your personal salvation does not deliver your territory. The gates are still there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are giants on every mountain. The Bible says, How terrible art thou in your works? It says, Through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I remember Bishop Oyedeko sharing one time and he said how that the church was not growing. They were fasting. They were praying and doing all they knew to do and it was not growing. And then one time while they gathered with the brethren and they were angry at the situation. He said the Lord asked him to come out. And when he stepped out, he saw a dark cloud. And he said, this is the cloud that makes people to misunderstand your ministry. And he commanded the cloud to roll away. And there was an explosion. Let me tell you something. Time does not change anything. It is power that brings change. Time only reveals. It does not change. For 38 years, the man was sitting at Bethesda. But when the power of God came upon his life, it is power that can give you audacity to be able to bring heaven to bear, to be able to bring the realities of the realm of the spirit here and now. It takes power to change an SS genotype to an AA. It takes power to open the door of marriage for a lady that it has been closed. It takes power for a woman without womb to get pregnant. It takes power for someone whose life has been tied forever. Through the greatness of thy power. I made up my mind that I have no ministry. If I cannot demonstrate its validity. Three keys very quickly. And then we are going to pray. The first secret the Lord taught me. Before we talk on the keys, let me just give us a little preamble. First John chapter 5 verse 9, help us media. First John 5 verse 19. Very simple but interesting revelation that God gives us there. First John 5 verse 19. Can we read it together as projected? One, two, read. Can you read it louder? One, two, read. Although we are of God, I'm giving you an information that the whole cosmos, the social system, lieth in wickedness. Please believe this. That the whole world lies in wickedness. You don't need to offend anybody. The condition to be a victim or a potential victim of the curse that comes upon creation is that you are born of a woman. For as long as you arrive here safely, from birth until you transit, there is a potential for disaster. It takes power to reign. It says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Rule thou. Pastors, hear me. If your ministry must move from where it is, you can have all the connection in the world. It takes spiritual power. Hallelujah. It takes power for anything to happen in this life. The first key 
to spiritual power is consecration. Write it down. Don't trivialize what I'm sharing. If you want to see the power and the anointing of the spirit upon your life, the first key is not praying in tongues. The first key is a life of consecration. What does it mean to be consecrated? It means to be yielded. It means to be aligned. It means to be separated unto God. Consecration is a reflection of your submission. A dedication that you have given your whole self, spirit, soul and body. You have laid down your will. I see so many people who want power, but they still own their wills. Let me tell you something. If it is true spiritual power, you want to see in your life, your will must die. Your personal will, your ambition, you must be willing to lay it aside if you want power with God. You cannot take the power of God and fulfill your own agenda. You must die. Die to your agenda. Are you getting blessed? Spiritual power is not a gift. Make no mistakes about it. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Consecration. The price of yieldedness. The centurion, when Jesus came, he made a statement. He said, for I am a man under authority. And on the strength of my submission to an authority, I can tell one go and he will go. I can tell one come and Jesus looked at him. A Roman citizen with such an understanding of the kingdom. Forget about spiritual power when your will is still alive. You want to run your life by your own terms, by your own way. So many pastors are doing their ministry they are church. So many businessmen are doing their business until it becomes God's own. Forget about power. Dedication. Consecration. I'll never forget one time when I was praying. It was, it, it's not a doctrine, it's my personal I had to, I was praying and I had to stand before God. Lay down, I stood naked from head to toe and I say, Lord, I'm dedicated by this prophetic act. My spirit, my soul, and my body. Let this mortal body become a superconductor of your anointing. I give it to you. I have no ambition of my own. My entire life is around the circumference of his will. You want to see the power of God upon your life? You must come to a point where you die to your will. Do not think God will give you power to do your thing. No. It will have to be at his terms. That's what was happening to Jacob. He touched his tie and made him everly dependent on an authority other than himself. There are so many people who are not consecrated to God. It takes dedication. It takes total surrender. That's the word. Surrender. Surrender. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. You gave your everything. I give my everything, take all of me, 
all of me Lord this is the key this is what I did with my life Lord take everything take my ambition take my destiny take everything that means life to me I surrender it to you and God says if you can give me everything he says for because you did not withhold your son that was the key consecration is not just about religious rituals it's about a state of surrender a state where you know that he becomes your life it's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me and the life that I live in the body the flesh I live by the faith of the son are you willing to give up everything the problem is many of us are not willing to give up everything because we have been able to educate ourselves falsely that every time you surrender all to God, he makes you a failure. Every time you give up to God, he, he, will, he will destroy your life. But he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. If it is your business, get set to die. If it is your marriage, get set for the pressure to kill you. If they are your children, get set to kill yourself raising them. But when it becomes his own. This song that we sing, they all belong to you. Even the air that we breathe. It all belongs to you, belongs to you, belongs to you. That's the anthem of my life. There's nothing in my life that belongs to Joshua Selman. It belongs to you. Listen, I have transferred every responsibility to him. I will play my part but it belongs to him. My life is not my own. I have no ambition of myself. My breath belongs to him. My strength belongs to him. This is the first secret of spiritual power. Consecration. That life of surrender. Believe me. So many men of God run around with dots of oil looking for anybody that is anointed and they kneel down with their carnality and flesh you can soak yourself inside one jerry can of anointing oil you will only get up littered with oil but you will not touch power with god you want power with god the first secret is surrender i'm not talking of born again i'm talking of him taking he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He was speaking to the church, but he was still crying for intimacy. Number two, the second secret of spiritual power is revelation and insight. Revelation and insight. Ephesians chapter 1, please. Let's look at verse 18. Paul the apostle prayed a prayer to the church in Ephesus. And he made an interesting statement. Help us please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. He says that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, flooded with light. Then he says that ye may know. When the eyes of your understanding is flooded with light, you know. You come into oneness with a reality. It doesn't just mean to be aware. It's not talking of awareness. It's talking of a state of oneness where you and that reality have become one. It says that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask or imagine 
But all of that is limited to the power that works within us. Light and illumination. When light breaks open over your spirit, please hear me. When illumination breaks open, authority is given to you in the spirit. One time I was in a vision. I've shared it here a number of times. And while I was in a vision, I saw a big door. Giant gate. And when I looked closely, it was zoomed to me. And I looked at it closely. And I found out that that big door was made of smaller doors. And on every door, there was a scriptural inscription on it. I saw the doors opening and closing. And every time they opened light, like an arrow would just shoot out of it. And then the Lord began to reveal to me that this is what happens when people catch a revelation of a dimension of truth. The light, the power, the anointing to demonstrate its validity is released upon them. Meaning when you teach a thing you cannot demonstrate, you have not caught the light yet, no matter how you pretend it. Illumination. Illumination. This is part of the benefit of prayer. That when you pray, capacity is given to you in the spirit. It's like a, a, an elevation in the spirit that tilts you in a position where you are able to see clearer. And on the strength of that illumination, you will walk. Hallelujah. There are so many people groping around. Dominion, I've said it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. You don't receive an impartation called dominion. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the laws and the mysteries of the kingdom. The scripture Pastor Alpha shared in Job 38, he was trying to quote it. Verse 33, he says, Knowest thou the ordinances of the heavens, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Do you know the laws that govern the realm of the spirit? And can you establish their dominion? There is something that if you know right now, the door that has been closed over you will open. There is an access to light. There is something when a pastor knows, increase becomes unlimited. There is something when a man of God knows, his life becomes a mystery. Every man functions according to the measure of light that is accessible to him. The Bible says you will only arise and shine to the degree to which your light has come. Not when you are tired of sitting. Arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Let me tell you a little secret. Especially if you are in, in ministry. There is a level of spiritual illumination that begins to rise from your life and your ministry. It starts attracting a kind of people. First, it will attract Gentiles. Kings will not come yet. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness. So there is a degree of illumination you have that will begin to bring certain people. But as the light keeps getting brighter, it will begin to compel certain kinds of people. Light. Illumination. I'm not just talking of Bible study. I'm talking about access to the mysteries of the kingdom. It says, call on to me. And that's why we are praying tonight. Because we need access to light. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. He says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are things we do not know. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants. Not everything is accessible to everyone. When Saul and his men, watch this. Uh, was it Saul or David now? I can't get the story quite clearly. But when they were returning back, they were tired and hungry. And they went to the priest and asked. They said, we want bread. Here's what the priest said. They said he said, there is no ordinary bread. The common bread is finished. 
but there is a hallowed bread. There are deeper things in the spirit. Weightier dimensions of illumination that can turn a man to become like a spirit. But it happens when you call upon him. He says, call unto me. When the king wanted to destroy Daniel and all his friends, he said, let the king not be hasty in this. I will bring the king a right answer. He went back and called upon him and his eyes were opened. He says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The next dimension of our life and destinies are at the mercy of spiritual secrets and mysteries this ministry by the grace of God is revolving around mysteries spiritual mysteries a mystery is a hidden code of operation it's a spiritual code of operation that only takes the agency of the Holy Ghost for you to understand its operation and it says it has been given unto you to know there is a mystery that will command dominion in your family. That all those powers of darkness that attempt to tie people's destinies down. Illumination. Number three. The third key to walking in spiritual power is being and remaining full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. There are different measures and dimensions of the Holy Spirit that can find expression in people. But if you want spiritual power in your life, let me tell you there is no laziness. You must be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Satan, come to me and does not find anything of himself. It was, it was Stephen. While he was about to be stoned, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost and power to a point that his face was like that of an angel. In Bible time, the condition to be a worker in the welfare department is that you are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. That was the requirement. To serve tables, you must be full of the Holy Ghost. There are so many believers who are not full of the Holy Ghost. That's why we carry our emptiness and we keep embarrassing ourselves. And there is one spiritual key to being full of the Holy Ghost. Prayer. Prayer. The ministry of prayer with fasting. It's the key. Spiritual key. That's why we must pray. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, Brothers and sisters, there is an energy that is generated within you. Every yoke, is the Bible gives us a picture. It's like an expansion that is happening. There is a level that expansion gets. It breaks every chain at once. At once. Full of the Holy Ghost. That's the level that we must contend. That you pray to a point where you become full of the Spirit. And certain things will happen to you the moment you are full of the Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, wearing in excess. It says, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are truly filled, naturally, certain things will start. You will start speaking. Not by your mental ascent. You are speaking as a response. Because when, when you are full of anything, Whatever spirit or agency fills you up begins to live out its nature through you. Manifesting its characteristics through you. That's how people become superhuman. They are full of the Holy Ghost to a point that they become puppets. Their voice is the voice of the spirit. Their hands have become the hands of the Holy Ghost. So when they tell you God bless you, they speak on the strength of the agency. The only way to communicate being full of the Holy Spirit is being drunk. When a man drinks to stupor, there is a level to which he drinks and that, that alcohol influences his mind and his faculty 
and momentarily he loses consciousness at that point he will say things and do things that are a direct influence of that alcohol when you become full of the holy spirit then the spirit of prophecy will fall on you and you will begin to speak and call things that be not let me tell you something the correct order of dominion prayers is to pray in tongues until you are full before you begin to prophesy you don't just stand up and start saying in jesus name gates open no there is a dimension you stretch in the spirit it's like an escape velocity when you get there the spirit of prophecy comes upon you and you begin to make decrees and i trust god that we'll get to that dimension tonight That is the level where you can call things that be not as though they were. That is the level where the anointing will shatter every yoke when you are full of the Holy Spirit. But when that power is at work in your life, it begins to activate possibilities. Brothers and sisters, hear me. It takes power for the gate of your destiny to be opened. Every one of us here is on our way to destiny. But it takes power. Otherwise the gates will not open. Tonight, hear me. You are going to stand and pray until the chains that lock up the gate of your destiny give way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm preparing our hearts because we are going to pray. The devil must give up on you. You must pray until that spirit of barrenness jumps out of your life. You must pray until the chains that are tying down your life go. You must pray. There is a way you can pray yourself to victory. It's like a flight in the spirit. You keep praying. When the flesh is tired, you say, no way. When you keep ascending, you will get to a point in the spirit where you would have touched reality. Brothers and sisters, you will never come back again. It's an escape velocity in the spirit. And then you wake up and all of a sudden you see doors opening. Don't wait until a word of knowledge is given or a prophecy. Tonight we are praying ourselves to destiny. We are kings and priests. We will take on the priestly role first. We will stretch in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him complain. Is any man challenged by gates? Are there doors that have refused to open? Let him pray. Is any man jobless? And you've done your applications and doors are not open. Pray your way to victory. Terminal diseases. It's because they have an occasion to lead to your flesh. When you generate power in the spirit, when you generate fire in the spirit, it burns every chaff. Does any man desire to see signs and wonders and miracles in your ministry and in your life? Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. Let me repeat it. Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. You can pray your way to victory in the spirit. You can pray your way to favor and breakthrough. You can pray your way and smash those doors. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. It takes prayer. When the apostles were caught and James was beheaded, it pleased Herod. The people were happy and they bound Peter. They were about to kill Peter and the church said, no way. And they began to pray. Prayer authorizes heaven to step in in your affairs. When you pray, you authorize heaven. When you pray, you activate the ministry of angels. When you pray, you begin the work of creation. 
creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Those who can access the power and the light. Tonight I want you to be angry with the things that have been happening in your life. Some of us are like a battery. We have gone down spiritually. You must pray yourself to fullness. There are so many men of God who do not pray. And they stand and do all kinds of gymnastics. Let me tell you something. Nothing in your life will cover for the absence of prayer. When a man is not a prayer man, it shows there is, there is a touch of eternity upon you when you are a man of prayer. For Elijah was a man of like passion and he used prayer to lock the gates over a city. He did not use a discussion with Ahab. Prayer! He locked the gate and kept the keys in his pocket. He said that gate will not be opened except at my word. Tonight, you can pray yourself to victory. Inside and outside and all around, there are families that have come tonight. People have traveled from far and near. It's time to pray yourself to victory. Pray yourself to victory until you are full of the Holy Ghost. The key of consecration. The key of illumination. The key of prayer. Being full of the Holy Ghost. You become a bank of spiritual power. Hear me. Let me say this especially. This seems to work only for men of God. It may not be applicable for other people. But let me give pastors a secret. The day power comes to your life, poverty has died forever. I guarantee you. I, the day power comes upon your life, genuine spiritual power, not nonsense that people are doing around. The day power comes, you have gotten something that is worth it. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them that if not for anything, when you find the anointing, you have found what is more than gold. We trivialize the anointing. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Oh God, you are my God. Early, like we are doing, will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. I want to see your power and your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media, do you have the Cindy Trim audio? They don't have it. There will be different sessions and I'm going to be leading the sessions. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying in tongues for one hour at a stretch non-stop. After that, when the spirit of prophecy is upon you, there is an anointing who anoint us and all of that. And then we can minister to people, but we need to pray. Do you have it? Are you ready with it? Okay, so quickly. Everyone is going to participate. We are going to pray. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. Everyone say it takes prayer to command victories. Say it takes prayer. That's what a vigil is. A vigil is not a time to sip tea and take lemon juice and, and banana cake. You are joking. A vigil is a time to tell the devil, Christ has won this. I come to establish my victory. Listen, the breakthroughs that will arise from this prayer session will surprise many of you. You never know how cheap Satan is until you are a man of prayer. You never know how cheap doors can be. How cheap they can open. When you pray in the secret then you make your life easy in the open but when you do not pray many of us pray but we pray amiss tonight i want to teach you strategies deep strategies for spiritual prayer that will produce results that you are talking does not mean you are praying 
there are many people who are talking for a long time and they leave that place with the same misery and frustration there, there are dimensions and laws and there are rules of engagement I don't know about you but part of my request I told God I must step into new levels of grace in this vigil shortly before I came here I lay down flat before the Lord and I said Lord my personal desire I know you will use me to touch and bless your people but whilst that is happening I hold on to your garment there is a new level I saw in a vision a curtain open and there was another one and I was pushed forward I said that's it I must pray till what I have seen many of you have seen things in your dream prayer is the weapon that you use to bring it to pass you have seen a great life you have seen a prosperous destiny but there are gates make no mistakes about it your business will not just excel there are gates sister the marriage will not just happen there are gates but tonight ministries and destinies will rise to a new level please i'm saying this so that you will prepare your spirit prepare your spirit rise up everybody inside and outside please rise up the first prayer point is a cry for grace call it the spirit of prayer and supplication lift your voice and pray Lord release upon me the spirit of prayer and supplication just pray please everybody rise 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 stand on your feet you came to pray do this for the sake of your destiny will you open up the gate open up the doors will you open up the gate open up the doors open up the gate Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice and pray in one minute before we start praying properly say lord i surrender everything to you lift your voice and pray take everything inside and outside right to the back lord i've tried to live my life my own way i surrender everything i surrender my will my ambition I surrender everything it belongs to you pray total surrender Lord, it belongs to you. The bread is yours. The gift is yours. The business is yours. The ministry is yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. Media, are you ready? Please let me know when you are ready.
You're ready? Now, hallelujah. Dr. Cindy Trim is a woman of prayer. Cindy Trim is a woman with a strong prophetic grace for prayer. And we're going to be using her one hour prophetic declaration. She makes prophetic declarations. It's an audio. While that is happening until it finishes, it's a guide. The moment it starts, we're stretching in the spirit. No sleeping. Anyone who is sleeping, hold his hands and walk around with them. No sleeping. Praise the Lord. Because this is about your destiny. Outside, make sure you participate. Whatever you do, be ready to stretch it in the spirit. And I want you to imagine yourself ascending a ladder in the spirit. Where you are tearing down the walls of limitation. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hands over your people and I ask for a supply of grace to pray. Grace to pray. Let the spirit of prayer and supplication come upon you. Let the capacity, the capacity to stretch in the spirit. It cannot be by your effort. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Praise the Lord. Lift your voice, everybody. Begin to pray in the spirit. Pray like a priest. Only in the spirit. Only in the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues. For as a prince. As a prince. This is not just your normal prayer life. I know, I know normally you pray. You are under a heavy unction. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. your Bibles please Psalm 92 Psalm 92 We're entering another phase. Verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I want us to read it together. One to read. One more time. Horn is a symbol of authority. Horn is a symbol of power. The anointing was usually put in a ram's horn. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt. Just like the horn of a unicorn is always above. You will exalt my He says, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Listen. The Lord asked me to do this before we begin to minister to the sick and all of that. This is ordinary oil.
but there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon this and this loses its earthly significance and takes on a heavenly significance this is an anointing that is coming upon you to bring freshness to your life this is an anointing that is coming upon your life to bring remarkable breakthroughs i saw this when i was praying in a vision and that's why i'm just doing this we're going to be very fast because there are still many other things to do i'm going to pray on this and we'll put it in this plate and the ministers will help will just spread it around when they pass it to you just tap your hand and put it on your forehead and begin to blast in tongues when everyone is done then we we'll begin with the ministrations father in the name of jesus christ can you open them for me? this is ordinary oil but by the power of the holy spirit i declare that beginning from tonight they carry the anointing of the spirit many of you as you partake of this fresh fire comes upon your life freshness listen tonight is a night of encounter with power hallelujah it's a night of encounter with power father i lay my hands upon this in a name that is above all names may they become conduits of your power may they become instruments of power as this comes upon the heads of many in the name of jesus christ i declare by the anointing of the holy spirit that they will bring supernatural breakthroughs supernatural freshness supernatural grace by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice and begin to pray and say Lord as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you praying as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you still praying lord i'm tired of stagnation i'm tired of hardship Lord, my heart is open. New dimension. New dimension of fire. New dimension of illumination. New dimension of victory. New dimension of grace. Don't, don't start applying it yet. We're tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more to do. There's gotta be more. Gotta be. Now listen, please, I want you to know that this is not an ordinary oil. It has the power of God. What you do is just pass it to the first person. You just touch it and then begin to make declarations and prophecies. We'll do that very quickly so that we'll finish up because there's, there's still some other sessions and our time is already gone. Hallelujah. It's gotta be more. 
gotta be more father let there be all kinds of miracles and breakthroughs as your people encounter this oil in the name of jesus christ go ahead just tap it late it on your head and begin to blast in tongues go ahead everybody you can put it on your hands if you want to but go ahead quickly quickly just pass it round, pass it round quickly. Make sure there's enough outside, please. Let everybody get everybody. Go ahead and pray. Make decrees. Make decrees. Believe what you are doing. Make decrees. Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Those outside, are they, do they have the oil? Please let's save time very quickly outside. Make sure you're speaking. My life will never be the same. Please rise up everybody. Let's pray for one minute. Ask the Lord to visit you and speak to your situation. Go ahead. Please pray. here kneeling with a child hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family that came here a family that came here I think this this has to do with sickness this is a family is it that you brought somebody or I'm seeing sickness and infirmity Please quickly, let's save time. We have, we still have a lot. Hallelujah. Stand up, sir. Where is your wife? I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft and I'm seeing oppression in your life. I don't know you. I don't know if this is your first time coming here. But the Lord wants to bring a visitation to your life. Please believe me. The Lord wants to bring you a visitation. Memuna. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Memuna. I'm hearing a name. I don't know if that's someone's name or that's someone's name. But I'm hearing the name Memuna. Lord is ministering to me. I don't have to call your case, believe me. The atmosphere that we're in is enough to bring us that breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hearing that name, Memuna, I'm going to pray for you. Is your wife sleeping? Please let her come. I just want to minister to both of you. She can return back to the car. Memuna. Mommy. Where is the woman with a prayer house? That mommy. Please make your way to the front. The Lord is saying I should minister to you fresh grace. Quickly, quickly, please. Where is that person? Who 
among you people. You have a prayer house. Where? That's what I was calling for. Come, why are you here? What's wrong with you? Eh? I'm looking at this young boy. What is this that I'm seeing? I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing snakes all over him. This is what I'm seeing. It came from you to him. Please collect this child. Let me start that to this woman. Please don't bring anybody out until I tell you to bring them out. Why are they here? Memuna, is that your name? Help us with a mic, please. Huh? Bring this little girl. How can such a little girl be so oppressed? You're sleeping. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let this oppression leave this lady now. Mommy, I'm going to pray for you. You are stepping into a new level of the prophetic. Your eyes will be opened in a strange way. In a very, very strange way. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing close to you. I'm pouring like oil. This is what I see happening to you. Like oil being poured upon you. And the Lord says, I should tell you, you are stepping into another dimension. A strange dimension of grace. Lord, make this happen by your grace. A strange order and a strange dimension of grace. Madam, where are you from? Madam, where are you from? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing serious oppression. An attack is not just on your baby this thing you are the one who really needs to be free not even the baby you get the point but you have calm down now madam let me talk to you I'm seeing you in the spirit there's no mic okay that's all right I'm looking at this madam in the spirit and I'm seeing you fatter than this I'm seeing what happened. You were sick. Even now. I don't even know that I'll come out. This is what I'm telling you because I'm looking at you in the spirit and the weight I'm seeing is not the same with what I'm seeing right now. That's why I told you it's not the issue of your child. What is happening is simply translating from you to the child. Come, sir. You and your lovely wife. The Lord is bringing breakthrough. Breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. Do you believe, madam? You believe that? Where do you walk? Are you walking? Where? Sterling Bank. It won't be too long. God is going to take you from that place. You know this now. You have been preparing towards. Yes. That's not true. Uh, because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a referee. Like a, you know when it's almost time in a football match. This is what I'm seeing. Your time there is almost up. And God is going to lift you. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm declaring that let this happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is need to pray for your child. Um, I'm looking at this child and I'm seeing something like symptoms of fever, temperature. We have to pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything that is not of God upon this child, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. Madam, the Lord says I should tell you that he's bringing you into a season of favor. Please, I want you to believe me. I don't just talk if God has not told me anything. Do you believe? Father, bring this family into tremendous realms of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Why am I seeing Memuna on your head? Are you Memuna? That's your name, come. You too, you are Memuna. I'm seeing a name written on her head and I'm seeing Memuna. Is that your name or is the name of someone? And I will restore. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He can restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Huh? Two things. Number one, your relationship with God. Huh? You can't be one leg in and one leg out. You get what I'm saying, right? Leave all those friends and focus. Use this night. Let this be a night of determination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let her be free. Mama, let me pray for you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I cause sickness I cause infirmity I'm going to pray for the sick but then I cause sickness from your body in the name of Jesus and every act of witchcraft I take authority over it in Jesus name I lay my hands upon this baby what's the name what's your child's name madam what's your child's name destiny I lay my hands upon destiny and I speak to you be made whole right now from every infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ madam be prayerful yeah? be prayerful there are some things I cannot show here but you see let me speak in parables you cannot come and collect my thing and pretend not to know me are you getting what I'm saying you cannot come and collect my thing in the secret and stand in the secret pretending not to know me it's very important be prayerful and he's either lord of all he cannot share his glory with any other people you get what i'm saying madam the lord is going to lift you and take you please i want to pray for your children because the devil wants to oppress them this is your church father in the name of jesus christ i pray Jesus Christ. This is spirit. Let her go now. Out! By the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, I pray for you. I'm seeing three babies. There are some women here. I'm seeing a woman particularly who came here specifically for the issue of fruit of the womb. Please, who is that person? I'm, no, you are not standing for anybody. You came for yourself. Who is that person? Let me just minister to the person very quickly. Please, let's save time. Fruit of the womb. Because the Lord is showing me, I just had the cry, three babies. Congratulations, madam. Where is she? Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher. There's somebody here. You are here with five broad. Right now as I'm talking. Great wisdom for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha! Ah, I see the healing angels. Stepping into this place. We we'll begin to minister to the sick proper now. I don't know why God does it. But he's going to do it again in a strange way. The anointing of God is going to come upon a lady. And she's going to shout. That loud shout will usher in the coming of the healing anointing. Please don't ask me why this thing happened. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. If you're sick in your body, please make your way to the front right now. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Everyone begin to pray, Lord, touch me. Please, if you're sick, just, just give them way. We're going to minister to them very quickly. Everyone will be touched. Everyone will be blessed. that's the end of it my dear that devil leaves you forever never to return never to return listen i want you to know that jesus heals here we have a track record by the grace and the mercies of god i'm going to minister to you very quickly so that we can speak specifically please make your way to the front just organize yourself and um, bring the lady. Where's the lady under the anointing? Case here. Yeah, I know. Eh? Look at, let me just calm down. I'm seeing something very funny and interesting here. Watch this. 
this woman, I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a corpse. I'm seeing somebody they have already buried. You see her? This woman is almost quarter to go. I mean, it's not clear there, but there's almost nothing here. Bones. Watch this. Um, the spirit that wants to kill this woman is in her son. This boy is standing. It's not like it's the boy that wants to kill her. So they went to consult with somebody. Huh? They went to consult with somebody. This person is like a herbalist. And he told them this is the boy that wants to kill the madam. He got it wrong because his understanding is limited. It's not like the boy wants to kill her. But the spirit at work in him is what is tying her. Both of them. This is the spirit of death. She would have died on the 22nd of this month. 22nd would have buried her. It would have been over. She would have stopped talking from 19th and died on the 22nd. God, you are higher than any other. I can say He's awesome in power. Come on, sing it like victorious people. I got to voice and say I God is greater, my God is stronger, no one you are higher than any other, my God is bigger, awesome and power, my God, my God. So let's, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I set this boy free from witchcraft by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause that spirit that is responsible for tormenting this one. Who speaks that story? Mama? Kiberta? Liva? Yeah, Kiberta. Batu Fadiva. She looks like a full of human. She, she understands how sir. Can I change how sir? Can I change how sir? Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect her. I curse this spirit. I take her out of these dungeons of death. Right now. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hallelujah. The last and greatest session of this meeting is where I begin to prophesy. That's where people receive the biggest breakthroughs and testimonies we may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but I want you to know that God is going to bless you Peter Adola is going to come up and for the next 10 minutes or so he's going to lead us through a dimension of worship and praise unto God and the moment that happens I will come back and we'll take up the last session with prophecy and then we'll take a few announcements we are done everybody give Jesus praise as we celebrate him
Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. And we've come to let you know. Father, we love you. Oh. Father, we love you. Oh, Father, we love you. And we come to let you know you are the most I God. Father, we worship you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship you. Let me say, Father, Father, we worship you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship. Say, Father, we worship you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship. Father, we worship you. Oh, you are the most high God. Father, we worship you. You are the most high God. We love you, Jesus. We oh, we worship. You are the most high God. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We Father, we, we reverence you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship you. We open up our hearts. 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 Come fill us, Jesus, with the water of life. We open up our hearts to you, Jesus. We worship you. Father, pour out your spirit on every flesh, oh God. We worship you. We pour our love on you. We pour our love on you. Till every flesh is crucified in us, oh God. We worship you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship you. You are the most high. You are the most high God. We worship. Father, we worship you. We worship. You are the most high God. We worship. Father, we worship. Say we worship. You are the most high God. We worship. Father, we worship. Lifted up, we worship. With our hands lifted up, we worship.
worship. We will lift up our hands it's to you, Jesus. Oh, oh, with our hands lifted up, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Yes, we worship Jesus, the King of Glory, the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundations of the earth. We worship you, Jesus. You say it. I am lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. There's no me without you. There's no me without you. Say it. No me without you. There's no life without you. There's no life without you. Oh, Lord, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I need a turn. I'm desperate for. Oh, I'm desperate for you. Desperate for you, Jesus. I can breathe without you. Desperate for you. Desperate for you. I'm lost without you, shame. I'm lost without you. Lost without you, say I'm lost without you. Church, say I'm lost without you now. Say I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. Let the rain of your presence fall Say I'm lost without you. Cover us with your grace. <laughs> Say, I'm lost without you. Let it rain on your present soul, God. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. We give you all the glory and the honor and adoration to your holy name. Yes, I'm lost without your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, say it. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Woo! Say it. Break every chain. Say break every chain. 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 Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, say, break every chain, break every chain, every 
chain, every chain. I see the chains are broken now. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. Say it. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every. Say break every chain. Say. Oh. oh, oh. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Break every chain. Oh God. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every one of the chains. And one of the chains are broken. With our hearts open wide to you, 
Hallelujah to your name. Amen, amen, Lord. Hallelujah. We know the song. Join me and say, You have a wonderful Say, Hallelujah. As the highest prayer. Oh. Declare it here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. 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 You won it all. You Hold you, death could not hold you down. Oh, you are the hey, hey, hey. sit at a majesty. Just leave him there. It's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have a few minutes and then we're done. I salute everyone. We'll have the last prayer session and then I'll just prophesy and speak over our lives. So can we all rise inside and outside? I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will sing before His throne forever. Never. 
you're holy, holy. Yes, you are holy. holy. Hallelujah, mighty one. Psalm 66, verse 3, please. Our last prayer session. We're going to be praying and we're going to be making decrees and commanding our lives and destinies. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy money? Or are you just allowing it to happen? Believers have authority, but we must put the authority to use. And then we compel these powers to submit. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. I want you to believe in the prayer session we're about to have right now. Very brief, but very impactful. And I want you to pray and pray like your heart depends on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, when Moses began to advocate the release of the nation of Israel, God's covenant people into their promised land. When the pressure got so much, Pharaoh negotiated. He said, all right, let, we have a deal. The men can go, leave the women and the children. Leave the factors that represent the continuity of that race, the women and the children. Let the men go because he knew they would perish. And Moses said, no way. We're going with our wives, our children, our cattle, and everything. So we're going to pray. The Bible says, Now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And it says God had blessed him in all things. Not some things. All things. It's, it's possible for you to experience breakthrough and advancement in one area of your life. But then you are tied in another area. Second Kings chapter 5 tells us about a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a great man. He did exploits, fought valiantly, but he was leprous. So we want to address those bots, those situations in our lives. Yes, you have done well. You are anointed. Yes, this and that, but there are certain areas. It must be total victory. Rise up on your feet. I want you to shout it after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Koinonia. Say in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come against every power. That attempts to fight my destiny. In the name of Jesus. I declare release. Of every other area of my life. That is under attack. And I declare this morning that it is my time for breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, 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 people of God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Mention the areas in your life that are pending, that need the breakthrough hand of God. Mention those areas specifically. Please lift your voice and pray. Take this session seriously. We're almost done. Rapakato proso so predegen de bela de bosch. Embrataka tabalata poco soto pregate. Are you praying in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray for every area of your life that is yet to experience breakthrough. Decree and declare that after this vigil, you will begin to experience breakthrough in that area. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we ward off the powers of hell standing against our lives and destinies. Are you praying? Are you praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was you praying? When Moses finally 
convinced Pharaoh to release them. Watch this. As they released them, while they were going, the Bible says they met a Red Sea. So they had left Egypt, but there was a Red Sea in front of them. Are we together now? And the Egyptians were back to capture them. And they began to cry. And in Exodus chapter 14, Moses said, Stand still. Stand still. He says, The Egyptians you see today, oh, you may have seen them for 430 years, but today, the Egyptians you see today, he says that you will not see them. And then he said, Moses, verse 15 now, Moses was crying before God. And he said, Why will you cry? Tell the people to move forward. Make advancement. Listen, this prayer we're going to pray is important because many of us, this prayer will supply courage. Hear me? It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward in business. It's time to move forward in your career. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray and say, Lord, everything keeping me down. Maybe it's the failure of the past. Maybe it's the lies of Satan. He has lied to you. Maybe you are falling again. You entered a relationship, it did not work. You have refused to enter another one to get married. You did business and it did not work. And the devil is stopping you from moving forward. You, you tried to give birth and you had a miscarriage. But right now, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs do not go before you, they follow you. When you take the step of faith, God is ministering to someone. It's time to get back. The anointing is still there. Where you fell is where you will rise and excel. The anointing is still there. Lift your voice and prophesy. I'm moving forward. Go ahead and pray. Pray. In my ministry, I'm moving forward. I refuse to allow challenges and limitations stop me. Inside and outside, I'm moving forward. In every area of my life you wanted to start a building project a challenge came and you have refused to move forward you tried to get admission you tried once twice it didn't work listen it says tell the people to move forward Koinonia I announced to you an anointing by an encounter with power is upon your life to begin to move forward now prophesy lord i'm moving forward i break those barriers i refuse to see challenges that project is doable the project is doable the marriage is doable come on pray now the ministry can rise is achievable it's achievable is achievable I may have been thrown down once but it is achievable there is still an anointing hallelujah hallelujah my bible says there is hope for a tree even though it be cut down Samson was a mighty man of power but for some reason he was anointed to be the judge over Israel. And for some reasons, he fell into the trap of a woman called Delilah. And that trap costed him his eyes. They plucked out his eyes and they shaved him. You would have thought that would be the end of Samson. Once a giant, the one who threatened the Philistines, the one who tore a lion and brought honey out of it, the one who removed a city gate, God is ministering to some people here. You have tasted power and honor. But something happened somewhere and brought you down. But tonight God is speaking to you that there is hope for a tree. You can rise again. When they took Samson and they took him to the temple and they were mocking him before our God, he prayed a prayer. He prayed a prayer of restoration that Lord, this one last time, let this anointing come upon me and the bible says he pushed he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime can i tell you something you should know the difference between failure 
as an event and failure as a person we live in a generation where every time you fail there are so many people coming to prove to you justifying their prophecies are you getting me now you start a business or a company it fails and everybody tells you you see you start a ministry genuinely called by god no growth there is failure and people tell you stop wasting your time a gentleman gets up and says i'm going to get married and no finances no resources no job and everybody tells him you'll be a failure or maybe a student you went to the board and you saw that you're on probation let me announce to you tonight that it is never over until you choose to give up are you hearing what i'm saying i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes i will never forget our first crusade our first crusade in joss you would have rated it maybe a failed crusade because they were not people they were not much we saw miracles we saw mighty things but the people were few we were stranded listen a crusade would happen the crusade was to start by 5 30 as about as at three o'clock the car was still spoiled we we're still on our way going i'll never forget the driver tried and tried and tried we didn't even have enough money we just had enough money to take us there how we were going to survive are you getting what I'm saying? Listen, when you see a successful man, don't just celebrate the stories. Ask the person for the pains and the scars. Successful people are those who have forced any closed door to open. They are not those who do not have challenges. Are you getting the point now? I will never forget that crusade was powerful. Immediately after the crusade, the sound guys were standing. 150,000 were to pay them. It looks like child's play now. But then it meant a lot. Because even if everybody in the ministry then came together, we would not be able to solve it. But we knew that God sent us. I knew what God had told me. A great crusade. The first crusade we did not even have. We could not rent video cameras. I'll never forget the humiliation that I went through from the sound people. It was, it was such a bitter humiliation. Those people frustrated my life literally because I could not afford it. I'll never forget one doctor in chemistry department on hearing on this situation, she took 5,000 and sold it as a seed. It was a disaster. I would have easily given up and said, that's it, Lord, no ministry again. Imagine the millions of lives within this country and around the world who have been blessed by this ministry if I had given up at that point God is speaking to someone Peter tried to catch fish all night, nothing happened he would have packed up successful people are those who are audacious don't mind the mediocre around your journey to success, they will always wait there to make you feel like you're a failure they will always make to claim their prophecy is self-fulfilling when you succeed, I guarantee you every one of them will change their reports about you Nobody has time to celebrate you on your way to success. But when you arrive, the worst that can happen is that you can be criticized. But no man can deny that this is the finger of God. I remember Dr. Paul Enenche, 99, right? When they went to Abuja, him, his wife, and two pastors were staying in one small room. Not by will. That was all they could afford. You would have called them failures. Do you know what it means for a man married with his wife and you cannot afford a house? You carry your wife and two pastors who are staying in the same room. But that's what it's been called today. Listen. I want you to know right now we are going to pray. You are going to challenge your fears. 
and challenge your limitations those voices that have spoken to you and made you feel that you cannot become anything they may be the voices of good people they may be the voices of sincere people but i come to prove them wrong lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus everyone shout it in the name of jesus i'm determined to succeed by the anointing of the holy spirit in the name of jesus my failures of yesterday will not stop me from achieving the breakthroughs of tomorrow i receive courage and fresh grace to face this mountain and to surmount it lift your voice and pray grace oh god lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray shake it take it take it take no weeping and just for a night joy comes to the morning no weeping and just for a night the lord is speaking to you joy comes with the morning you didn't get the admission but it does not mean it cannot be gotten the marriage didn't work out the travel abroad did not work out it does not mean you cannot travel the business did not work out it does not mean you are a failure you may not have money now you may not have connection now nobody may recognize your anointing but keep pressing keep pressing hallelujah hallelujah was he praying you are going to pray and cry for supernatural persistence and endurance listen let me tell you you can ask every one of the ministers here barack who ministered and peter adole manasseh pastor alpha ask all of them they will tell you stories and episodes of endurance listen there was a time in my life i was tightening and i was giving nothing was happening are you getting what i'm saying any man that just tells you it just happened like that lied to you i'm telling you there are seasons in your life where it looks like your heavens are closed although they are not closed are you getting what i'm saying nothing like a result is happening you are planting bearing precious seeds but nothing is happening as a man of god you know the anointing upon your life while you are laboring in the spirit nobody is recognizing your grace to invest in it you can be a great worshiper and for many years you may be moving around crying for just one open door but the doors may not open listen to me you can be a lady pretty and virtuous you've done everything you need to do in your strength sincerely speaking you've done everything you know a woman should do to be prepared for marriage before god and men everyone knows truly you are prepared for marriage all the demons to be casted have been casted out but no man is coming and vice versa for a man you may graduate with a great degree you have served you've even complimented on your degrees submitted cvs let me tell you something in every man's life there are seasons of persistence and endurance i want you to know this don't let any man fool you god is a god of speed not rush god does not rush he brings speed not rush there are seasons where you are proven the bible says john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance there is something called a man's season of appearance you can manifest before your season of appearance and keep struggling trying to find relevance years ago he may remember we went for a meeting in in kaduna a very powerful meeting and when we went there there was a man of god who was supposedly a bishop there was nothing bishop about him when you launch yourself without your season of appearance the man was there and after the meeting i i could not even figure one person who came to say man of god you blessed me 
the bishop was there moving around no friend no car no nothing we went to the restaurant he just sat down somewhere and was just taking his powerhouse nobody was even encouraging him and i said in my mind lord if this is how it means to be a bishop i don't want this honor when god blesses you he brings honor with it when you launch yourself you will keep floating looking for relevance i'm speaking to many of us here we are at the verge of breakthroughs keep holding on there are times you don't need to do anything new you just need to keep doing what you are doing because what you are doing is not wrong if a baby we have a few babies around here if a baby suddenly decides to take one drum of breast milk that baby will not suddenly get up and become an adult because he took breast milk if an old man starves himself to die he will not suddenly become young because there was no food are you getting what i'm saying and jesus grew he didn't become he didn't jump and jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with men life is in dimensions are you hearing what i'm saying and there are times in your life you will need to wait listen you may be a man of god anointed it is true that god has spoken to you about ministry but for now all you'll be doing is cleaning tables be faithful you must receive grace for endurance because let me tell you hope defers makes the heart weary the heart of man is, is, is very fragile. The moment you wait after a season of practicing kingdom principles and you don't see results, naturally speaking, naturally speaking, fatigue will come in. You're going to lift your voice. Are you still tired? We're rounding up. This is a very important prayer point. Lift your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive grace for endurance i receive grace for persistence i receive grace for resilience i will wait i will be patient until my season of appearance lift your voice and pray patience oh god if you turn aside in a day of battle it says your strength is small lift your voice and pray Persistence persistence endurance in prayer endurance in obedience hallelujah two more prayer points the bible tells us that a virgin called mary was just minding her business one day suddenly an angel appears to her listen appears to her with a prophetic message thou art highly favored blessed are you among women and she wondered what salutation this was and the angel began to tell her that she was going to carry a baby and she said how shall these things be i know not a man just like god is telling you the same you who is standing one day you will own your television station and the world will be watching you and you look around and say how shall these things be and he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you watch this the moment god told mary because her life at that time was an unusual life and then the angel recommended her to elizabeth somebody who was carrying the same mystery and the same vision you will never make it in life if you are the only one who looks like you there must be people around your life that can identify no matter how mystical the instructions are there must be somebody around your life that can say although this looks strange i see that the hand of god is upon it loneliness 
in destiny has killed many people they are carrying visions they they have no other shoulder to lean on and mary went to elizabeth every other woman would have said you are very stupid tell us the rabbi you slept with that you are lying that a spirit got you pregnant but she went to a woman who had been barren for a long time so she's in a position that can identify with these kinds of supernatural things watch this and the bible says as soon as elizabeth mary and elizabeth saw the babies the destinies in their wombs leapt you need people around your life that can look at you and say that 300 million naira project is doable how much do you have 10 naira say yes i was once like that you need people in your life that can be crazy enough and you say sir i'm trusting god for a house or a car by the end of the year how much do you have two thousand he said you are even better than me when i was about to buy the car i had 500 naira suddenly you know you are not alone there is nothing as encouraging as finding a madman like you somebody who can agree with you and say it is doable it's a dangerous thing for a man of god dangerous thing for a businessman dangerous thing for a destiny shaker to be around people who do not have any experience that can engineer faith in you are you getting what i'm saying that you come and say my sister i want to share with you something don't be afraid though say what is it say do you know i don't have a womb and the lady will not say ah what is all that say abba your case is a simple case there was a woman like that it's not just that she didn't have a womb in fact her own was a, a bad case but she had twins you see that that's elizabeth you need to call for elizabeth to your life because many of us are about giving up on visions that are of god but there are no motivators there are no people to tell you it is doable who said you can't start a bank everybody say bank what nonsense are you talking about somebody tells you you can do it you can do it you can start the bank you pray them into your life are you getting me there are ladies right now this is august but you heard from god genuinely and you are trusting god to be settled by december you, if you meet a wrong person the person will look at you and say i have what nonsense how many months will it take for traditional marriage how many months will it take to raise offering uh, sorry to raise the uh, raise the money for the marriage how long will it take do you know how much wedding gown is do you know how much it means to rent a house do you have 1.5 million all those devilish things you need to throw those people away and meet somebody who tells you i i met my guy in october we married by december 15th it is possible lift your voice and say in the name of jesus i call forth to my life the elizabeths of my destiny say after me in the name of jesus i call into my life my destiny motivators may they come to encourage me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray we call for the elizabeths we call for the elizabeths we call for the elizabeths men and women of similar vision men and women of similar passion And women of similar vision men and women of similar passion hallelujah lift your hands everybody as I prophesy to us please I want you to receive it receive it with all your heart and receive it with a loud shout of amen the Lord gave me a revelation on the creative power of prophecy and we've had all kinds of humbling testimonies he says son of man can these bones live and he said only thou knowest then he said prophesy speak to these bones speak to these situations as far as i am concerned there is nothing called impossible not when god steps in it is impossible when there are men 
but not when God steps in. I pray for you right now in the name that is above all names that every door that before now has been closed over your life and your destiny by the anointing of the Holy Spirit return to find that door open now. I prophesy it upon you. Return to find that door open in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life where your strength is limited you have done everything you know to do I'm declaring upon you right now let a fresh anointing take you through the remaining part of the journey in the name of Jesus Christ where your human strength has stopped may an anointing come and pick you up in the name of Jesus Christ when Jesus was about to start his ministry a voice spoke no matter how anointed you are it will take somebody to announce you please listen i show you a mystery no matter how anointed you are a midwife although she's a midwife she won't deliver a baby by herself when it is time for her to deliver she will need other midwives no man can bless himself no man can endorse himself are you hearing what i'm saying a voice had to be spoke out had to speak from heaven and said this is my beloved son and he commanded the world to hear him lift your hands let me speak over your destiny your destiny remains grounded until a voice can speak in the realm of the spirit a simple prophetic word but it's a profound law i'm praying for you right now by the anointing of the holy spirit everything that has covered your glory everything that has covered your your gift and your potential from being seen desired and celebrated i speak right now is your time for celebration i speak right now is your time for celebration i speak it to you right now is your time for recognition it's time for your gift to be noted it's time for men to pay attention to what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ and I call for the helpers of destiny the wine pressers the bakers those who will speak to the king on your behalf I call them into your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ I declare upon you that all the years that the canker worm has eaten all the years the palmer worm has eaten what you think is forgone what you think is a waste i'm prophesying to you right now may there be double restoration may there be double restoration double restoration i pray for every family represented here in the name that is above all names not only will you receive visitation I release visitation to families 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 in the name of Jesus let there be visitations may the Lord wipe the tears of families in the name of Jesus Christ every project you want to embark on these hands that are lifted I put an anointing upon it and I force it to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ everything your hand embarks upon in the name that is above all names may you prosper in it in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your finances listen when you are not empowered financially you will be limited in many ways there's no long story about it hallelujah cry yet say in Zechariah 1 17 a thus saith the Lord my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion it takes finances to fund your assignment it takes finances for you to move forward lift your hands I pray for you in the name of Jesus every power limiting your finances every power limiting you from obeying the principles that bring increase I set you free from it right now in the name of Jesus Christ every spirit of greed that keeps you in poverty and penury I set you free from it right now in the name of Jesus 
I'm prophesying upon your life by the mystery of divine supply in the name of Jesus may God send into your life people opportunities and resources in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your spiritual life after spending time praying and waiting for eight hours in a vigil in the name of Jesus let fresh fire come upon your spiritual life fresh fire come upon your spiritual life many of you will return back and you begin to see dimensions you never walked in suddenly activated in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every church and every ministry here grace to step into the next level of impact grace to step into the next level of impact in the name of Jesus Christ I release a breakthrough anointing upon every endeavor of your life beginning from this morning let it begin to speak in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and worship the Lord give him praise hallelujah hallelujah let's take the following announcement and we're out of this place we thank the Lord for strength for grace to stretch it through now please listen carefully I want to announce to us that next week is going to be a very special program here is the practicum of our school of ministry students hallelujah I think you should celebrate them if you don't know what it's all about I want you to come that means our students will be handling the service everything from beginning to end will just be here supervising and assessing them um, you will be mightily blessed please invite all your friends and everyone to come around time is 6 p.m exceptional voice training school a voice training school belonging to um one of our people david dam where is he where's david dam okay that's his voice training school and um it's only for singers and vocalists the admission form is 200 naira the school fees for admitted singers is 4,000 only interested persons should meet him immediately after the service believe me he's a fabulous vocalist and um, he's done a lot in the area of um, vocal proficiency and he's ready to invest and pour into many people so make sure you are part of it project 10,000 is still on please be part of it if you are not there's free but limited um, bus transport immediately after the service those going to Shika and Congo, please wait at the projector stand outside. You can book for your counseling. Sorry, I was not around last week for counseling. But you can book right after the service for your counseling. Be, remember, be reminded that all bookings stop on Sunday, 6 p.m. And then messages will be sent to those who are booked. Please, if you wait till 9 o'clock or 9.30 and you don't get an SMS, you can call the protocol line. The ushering department, um, Commoda Joseph DK, should please meet the ushers to collect his school ID card. If you're here, meet the ushers for your ID card. And then this goes to everyone who has misplaced any item in the course of the service. Please, you meet the ushers. The Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students Concerts tagged engineering in all aspects of life. Is holding a program today the 8th of august time is 9 a.m the venue is the new engineering lecture theater faculty of engineering featuring academic academia engineering in industry leadership entrepreneurship um, ministers will be engineer abdul malik courage professor igbadun i'll be ministering there too and engineer emmanuel obeka so you're invited, especially for those who um, are engineers or engineering students. The prayer department invites the house for her prayer meeting at Rema Chapel on Tuesday by 4 p.m. Hallelujah. Please take note of our official lines. You can use them. Department of Protocol and Logistics, they have two lines. And then um, the media department, you can also have their details if you do not have this is free you can pick up one with the ushers hallelujah i want you with an ovation to celebrate those who are worshiping with us for the first time 
if this is your first time here please make your way to the front everyone who is worshiping with us for the first time koinonia keep clapping we're almost done do this for them god bless you god bless you god bless you celebrate them please make your way to the front no matter how far we want to pray for you and bless you the lord brought you by his spirit keep clapping koinonia thank you so much for coming the lord brought you by his spirit to lift you we honor you and we thank you for coming hallelujah wow let's celebrate our mommy mrs oh no god bless you ma just wanted her hallelujah thank you ma thank you thank you for all the people who are here god bless you hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah thank you for coming and worshiping with us this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international we're here every fridays and this was a special vigil a special program i know that your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. We have a prayer and a blessing for you and we want you to receive it with all your heart in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and let's prophesy over their lives. We speak over your life that is from glory to glory, that you have come and spent time in his presence. I declare that you'll never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're experiencing the power of God in your life. Beginning from today, the evidence of your coming here will show in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge you came here with, we declare that it becomes a testimony. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with fresh hunger for God. Fresh hunger for the things of the Spirit. May you go back and experience the honor of God upon your life in unprecedented dimensions. If you have been running, go and begin to fly. In the name of Jesus, you will move at the pace of the Spirit. There's no limitation upon your life. We bless you. We release upon you the blessings of this house. Let everything you do and touch prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Now, we we'll just request you to do just one thing before you come back to your seat. Um, there are people who will welcome you more warmly, will have your details and will communicate just a few messages to you and you'll be back to your seat. Thank you very much. I just wanted to follow the lady waving her hands. They'll have your details very briefly and then you'll be back to your seat. Can you celebrate them, Koinonia? Thank you so, so much. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 